So another great example of a tool that you can use to practice retrieval practice with your classes or pupils is Cudapod. So Cudapod allows you to create interactive lessons um, using things like polls, word clouds, open questions, drawings and Q&A to capture student voices. Now you can make your own slides in Cudapod or you can upload an existing presentation that you already have. So when you come into Cudapod, this is what the teacher side looks like. This is my homepage and the first thing that I can do is I can discover. So I can tap discover on the top and I can find a quiz I might want to do with my classes. So for example, um, I might go down to this one and I might go for an emoji survey and I can tap into this and I can look through the slides and see if this is something that I'd be interested in using. If I'm interested in using it, I can play it straight away with my classes or I can tap copy and edit and that will then put it into my bank that I have there as well. So there's lots and lots of quizzes that are already available. You can search for them as well. So for example, if I want a maths lesson in particular, I can tap maths and it's going to bring up lots of worksheets and different quizzes that I can do as well. And um, if I wanted a brain break instead, um, I can look through those as well. So there's lots and lots of different options that you can use from there. If you would like to create your own lesson, you can tap create lessons at the top and I can decide whether I want it to be a blank lesson that I'm just going to make from scratch. I can decide if I want a full lesson to be generated for me or just a brain break or a multiple choice quiz or an exit slip. I'm going to tap full lesson and this is the amazing part about Curipod. So it uses AI to create quizzes for you. So I'm going to say I want a lesson on flags and I want it to be for... 10th grade and if you know them you can paste in the learning objectives or standards that you want it to match then you just tap do magic and it's going to generate a lesson for you essentially using um, the artificial intelligence that's built into it so this is a really really nice feature if you don't want to start from scratch or you don't have time to start from scratch with building a lesson. So this will start making a basic lesson for you and then you can take that and edit it in whatever way works for you. Now, while this is making it, I'll just have a quick chat about some of the other features that are available within Curipod. Oh, here we go. So with this one, there are 12 slides it's made for me. So let's have a look at them. So it's asking what are the three primary colours of a flag? And that's a word cloud that that's going to create based on it. Then I have a little bit about what they tell us about nations, so it's giving me some interesting facts. It's talking about the concepts and giving some fun facts about them. And it's asking the pupils then to work in pairs, so what emotions do flags evoke? Again, working in pairs, thinking about significance. Then there's a little brain break. What, which is the flag of the United States of America, flag of Canada, flag of Mexico, France, etc. So it's created 12 slides based on what I've asked it for. Now, if I don't like any of these or some of the questions I want to change slightly, I can tap edit um, and I can change those if I want to. But what I'm going to do just now is we're actually going to play it and I'm going to show you a little bit about how this works. So if I tap play, then it's going to bring this up. So this is the kind of main screen. So this will be on my computer screen for the pupils to see. And you can see here that I've got a timer that I can set on this side as well. So let's say that I actually only want to give them 30 seconds for this. Um, now, I need my pupils to actually join, though, in the first place. So to do that, I tap the person at the bottom. And this is going to bring up. change other settings if I want to. I can require real names when they sign in. Um, names are visible only in the moderation tool, so it means I can still see what their answers are. So I'm going to put my real name in now. Um, and basically what I can also do is put this in full screen or add activities. Adding activities is really great. So let's say I'm teaching my class and we do a question and it doesn't go the way I thought it was going to go and I've now thought of something else I'd like to add in. I don't have to go away, get everyone off the quiz, add a question and then reassign everyone it. I can just add a new quiz on the fly as I'm doing it, which is quite nice as well. 
Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna press play. on my phone that I'm doing great and you can decide if you want to show the word cloud now obviously there's only one of me um, answering this but if there was more than one person you would get a word cloud of all of these um, on the screen okay I'm ready to move on to the next one so this is just going through little bits about these and um, so you'll they'll just look at the screen and you'll go through those as usual so you can teach your whole lesson through QRPod you don't have to go back and forward between um, basically the slides and those interactive parts with this one I'm going to skip this I'm going to skip this and I'm going to show you one of the brain break ones. So this one you can get them to draw. So I'm going to change the timing again. So draw a flying fish swing through a rainbow coloured tornado. And basically people think I can draw them to essentially. submitting my drawing and I can basically either get people to vote on this which is quite nice so if there's more than one drawing and um, everyone votes and um, if not I can just skip that and I can show the drawings everywhere. So it's quite a nice one having that drawing feature available as a biology teacher I'm thinking I can ask them to draw pictures of cells or the heart etc um, so that's quite a nice one. With this one this is a multiple choice one so what is the flag of the United States so when I'm ready I just tap play. And then they just tap an answer. And you can see the people's results there. You can discuss it just like you would if this was a Kahoot or a Quizzes. And again, that's another multiple choice one. These are all just poll ones. Um, but there's lots of different ones, as I said, that you can do. There's lots of options available. The short answer ones, as I said, that you can put into a word cloud. Um, and those drawing ones are really, really nice as well. When I'm finished, um, I can show options are not there as well. Um, but I can just end the lesson at that point, And that's going to log everyone out. Now, as a teacher, I then have access to lots of information. I can see basically what activities we've played. I can see how many people responded and I can see the real names or not um, as well. And it's quite nice that everyone else can't see who got those answers right or wrong, but you can as well after. So I can go through any of the ones we played and double check their answers. And the nice feature as well is I can export this if I'd like to um, as a file I can use in Excel, etc. So it's a really, really nice way of creating a lesson there from scratch. I didn't have to do anything. I just told it what I wanted the lesson to be on and then as I said if I really wanted to I could have gone in and edited any of those quizzes as well. So the options are there and basically if I've got any of my quizzes um, that I've done before I can present these again, I can see the results, I can share them again, um, I can go back through, I can edit, I can duplicate as well. So maybe I did quite like that lesson on flags, but next time I'd like to maybe add a few extra questions in, I can edit that or I can duplicate it and then edit as well. So basically, that's a really, really quick introduction to QRPod. Um, as I said, really, really useful tool, quite a new tool that not a lot of people have used before, um, but something I would highly recommend trying out because it has a lot of those features that make retrieval practice um, useful or effective in terms of their pupils. It's low stakes because they're not having to put their um, full name in front of the class um, for anything, but you've still got that data behind it. They're getting feedback right away from you giving whole class feedback, but also from getting the answers um, as well from the system. Um, but it's also helping you in terms of workload, in terms of it can generate those lessons as well, or those basic lesson outlines, and you can change and adapt and add to those as well. So really, really good overall in terms of retrieval practice, but again, just making sure that pupils have closed their books when they're doing this and um, so that it is genuine retrieval.